It raises some questions because you've got not only some different players there who are going to want to assert their views, but also different camps. There's a more conciliatory, pragmatic camp in terms of what the approach to China should be. I would put Secretary Mnuchin and NEC Director Kudlow in that camp. And then you've got some, some more hawkish and quite empowered voices, Robert Lighthizer at USTR, uh, Wilbur Ross, and of course, uh, Peter Navarro, who's been very strong on China. In terms of expectations, what would be a win here? They're only there for two days. It's unlikely that they're going to convince China to upend their economic policy. So what should we expect? That's right. Don't expect any breakthroughs. I think a win for the U.S. side would just be a sign that China is willing to engage on the two main issues that are at stake here. The first is the trade deficit, and that's what matters to President Trump. The other is the substance of concerns behind the Section 301 investigation that's being led by Lighthizer at USTR. And that's about, in some ways, a more difficult set of issues surrounding China's industrial policies and the way that innovation has moved to the center of these disputes. So a lot of that involves, obviously, protections on intellectual property and, and things that get highlighted in terms of U.S. companies trying to do business there. Do the Chinese acknowledge that that's on the table, that there's some evolution that has to happen in those policies, or is it just a matter of uh, waited out and, and resistance? That's, that's a great question. So I would say what China has tended to focus on is protection of intellectual property. That's a longstanding concern. What they have not really engaged on is the notion that these very ambitious industrial policies that Beijing has been rolling out, like the Made in China 2025 initiative, which really seeks to catapult China into uh, you know, leading position in areas like tech and advanced manufacturing, they have not been willing to engage on the substance of U.S. concerns. But it's not really just the U.S. that's, that's uh, alarmed by this. It's Germany, it's, it's the rest of the EU, it's Japan. So I think we're sort of at an inflection point right now where China's starting to realize the depth of concerns. Right now, the rhetoric has, from Beijing has been that they're digging in. And that's going to be a central question is, are they willing to talk about this set of concerns? Because if they're not, then this dispute is, is it's going to be hard to reach a settlement. There are reports that uh, the Trump administration is considering an executive order regarding Chinese telecom sales to the U.S. I mean, the context of these talks is what? Is, is, I mean, it seems like interesting timing that they would have this report floated out, and, and they've already banned American companies from selling to ZTE. So there's been some activity here. Does that make it harder to, to even come away with a win? It does. So we've got this, you know, this one dispute, Section 301, but taking, you know, Behind the scenes, or I should just say, you know, right, right off camera is a set of actions that have been really the U.S. trying to clamp down on the role that Chinese firms will play in U.S. tech infrastructure. And that is going to make a settlement harder. I mean, what we've seen over the last week is President Xi uh, making very public appearances on Chinese state media talking about the importance that China move to self-reliance in areas like semiconductors because they're worried about the U.S. cutting off firms like ZTE or potentially Huawei from, from U.S. chips. So this is, uh, we're sort of in a vicious cycle here where China sees these, these actions, decides that it needs to dig in that much further, develop self-reliance, and that's just going to squeeze U.S. tech firms. And so I think this is, this is a very difficult part of the dynamic that we're in right now. Hey there, thanks for checking out CNBC on YouTube. Be sure to subscribe to stay up to date on all of the day's biggest stories. You can also click on any of the videos around me to watch the latest from CNBC. Thanks for watching.